Hello everyone and welcome back to Nate the Hoof Guy. Today's video, well, it's pretty obvious why we've chosen this one to trim. There is something going on in this right front foot, so we're going to pick it up and get started. Now, this video, we're going to do something different than we typically do. We picked up a lot of new subscribers lately, so instead of talking too much about exactly what's going on with this particular one, we're going to answer a bunch of those frequently asked questions that we get from every single video. And the first of those is, why don't you wash this foot off before you even start? Well, if I were to do that right now, you would not be able to tell where that problem was because it would still look brown and discolored. However, with just a few swipes of this grinder, that sole of that foot becomes perfectly clean. And the problem, well, it's pretty obvious. Now I know intuitively, you would think you'd want a nice, clean environment to start the trimming process. But in reality, you could never really get this foot perfectly clean because the problem is actually hidden up underneath this little mark you see in the sole right here. Underneath there is what needs to be cleaned out thoroughly, and we can't do that right now because there's hoof in the way. We need to remove that first, and then we can really do a good job at cleaning that area. The analogy I like to use is, if you had a pair of dirty gloves on, but you wanted to wash your hands, you would take those gloves off first and then wash your hands. Same situation here. We've got a layer of hoof over the problem. We need to take that away and then we can thoroughly clean the issue that's underneath that. Now, another question I get is of course on this claw or this cow, we've got a problem on this claw, but what if there was problems on both claws? Now, for those of you that have watched this channel for a long time, you probably know what's gonna happen coming up here. We're gonna trim this area away and then we're gonna put a rubber block on that other claw to take the weight off of this one, right? But if there's problems on both claws, can you still do that? Now you can, if you were to fashion a block in certain ways, you can do that. I do not choose to do that in most instances. And the reason is, is because blocks are used to isolate weight, to put weight in certain areas. And what I want to do, I don't want to isolate weight or put weight, a lot of weight in particular areas. What I want to do is distribute that weight evenly on a, on a cow that's got problems on both claws because I don't want too much weight on one particular claw. I want them to be able to heal. So my solution in those cases is no blocks. We're going to leave this cow be just as she normally would. And I'm going to uh, move this cow or have the farmer move this cow to a bedded pen with lots of soft bedding so that we're not putting any excess pressure on those particular areas. Now, of course, I'm gonna wrap it up to try to keep those areas clean for a short period of time while that's happening, but I'm not gonna use blocks to, to transfer weight and put it in different areas. I want that cow to be as, as comfortable and as stable on that foot as she can possibly be. Can you see here, there's a small stone in here. That's another question we get a lot or a lot of another misconception that, we're, that we uh, have is that rocks cause a lot of problems in cow's feet. However, that's really not the case. Rocks, of course, end up being in those areas, but they're in those areas because the claw itself has something defective wrong with it. For instance, in this case, that rock was able to get in that, that, that uh, cut in the bottom of that sole and that is how that rock was actually there. The rock didn't cause that cut, but that rock was able to find its way in there because of that. Same thing with white lines. That white line defect is actually a crack in that uh, white line of that foot or where that outside wall meets that sole. And it's that area that that rock is able to get into. Now, that's not to say that rocks can't cause problems, but generally that's not the case. Another common question, is this process painful for the cow? Now the trimming part, this trimming of the hoof that I'm doing right now, that is not painful. That is just like trimming our fingernails. Now that area of discomfort, that area in the middle there, that of course is uncomfortable. That's why she was holding this foot up. So there is discomfort in this claw, but the actual trimming part, if done carefully, is not uncomfortable. I'm sure it doesn't feel great, but like anything else, we need to remove that area to get this to heal. So we just need to do it in a way that's not going to, to touch anything sensitive in that claw. We're working around the edges. We're removing the hard horn material, which like I said, is much like our fingernails. We stay away from those sensitive areas as best we can. 
Now, when it comes to knowing how much of this to remove, we're removing the detached area from around the areas of, of corium disturbance. It's pretty obvious to see where that disturbance is on this particular claw. So what I'm doing is removing any of the loose horn from around that just to keep that horn from abrading that particular area. Now, in nature, there would be no one to take this hoof away. So what is happening is that that sole is lifting away naturally from that. That's how the cow would normally take care of this on her own. The sole that I'm removing now over time would fall away and that would allow that problem to, to resolve and for a new sole to grow in its place. However, that takes much longer than we have or that we want to have this cow to deal with this. We wanna take care of this as soon as possible for her benefit and that's why we trim this. Within a month, this horn will all completely replace. That's our another common question. How long does this take to resolve or how much, how long for this sole to replace itself? Solar horn grows at approximately a quarter of an inch per month. So within a month, we'll have about a quarter of an inch of sole back on this claw, and that is enough for a cow to bear weight. Of course, there's not enough there now, and that's why I'm gonna put this rubber block on this other claw. That's gonna elevate this, the claw that we're working on off the ground, keep her from walking on that during that time period. That's gonna allow that sole to grow and become the correct thickness. What I'm doing here, I'm just gonna use this grinder to thin this sole out a little bit more because I've got a little bit more to remove here. The wheel that's on this grinder is a cutting wheel, non-abrasive, so there's no heat created when I'm trimming that claw. It's got some carbides on there that just gently shaves the hoof away as I'm trimming. The knives that I'm using now, those are specifically designed hoof knives, and they're, they've got a, uh, a hook on the end of that. You can see I'm using right now. That hook is there to help lift that horn away as I cut. That allows me to make sure that I'm not cutting too deeply, and that helps me lift that horn away as I make that cut. That spray that you see me use, no, that is not Windex. Ha ha, that is chlorhexidine. Chlorhexidine is an antiseptic, and it's used to help clean these areas. I use it to irrigate the areas as well as an antiseptic to kill any of the bacteria that might be on this particular area. Salicylic acid powder, that's what I'm adding now. That serves several functions. Not only is it gonna help uh, kill some bacteria and exfoliate any of the, that um, dead material from that area, but it's also gonna provide a little bit of pain relief as well. The wrap, it's just gonna stay in place for a couple of days. It's gonna hold that in place to allow it to do its job. Now she's done. Off to go, back to her pen. So I hope I answered a bunch of those questions that you probably have if you're new here. I'm sure you've asked yourself those, and hopefully I did a good enough job explaining them. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you all on the next one.